D-Day was the largest amphibious invasion in history, but it would also see around 23,000 Allied soldiers entering the battlefield by parachute and gliders. The paratroopers had a particularly difficult job, having to carry all their gear into battle. One item which carried much of their equipment was famously shown during the miniseries Band of Brothers. The leg bag, a British invention, was used by some of the US paratroopers, who had very mixed results with this piece of kit. In today's video we ask, was the D-Day leg bag any good? If you enjoy this video and want to see more, hit that subscribe button. It's free and really helps the channel reach more history lovers like you. The early British paratrooper operations were similar in nature to the Germans. The soldiers' equipment and small arms would be dropped out of the aircraft in canisters, and the soldiers themselves jumping with very little gear attached. Once on the ground, they needed to find these canisters quickly to retrieve their weapons and fight the enemy. During some of these operations, canisters failed to be dropped from the aircraft or even located on the ground. This caused a rethink. By 1943, the idea of a soldier jumping with all their equipment and weapons came to life. A new creation, known as a leg bag, would hold much of the troops' heaviest equipment. This kit bag was made of reinforced canvas and could supposedly hold up to 50 kilograms or 110 pounds of equipment. It had a small cutout at the bottom to fit snugly over the wearer's boot. Two canvas straps were secured, one under the knee and one above the ankle. These straps were attached by quick-release buckles, with the soldier having the ability to release the bag from his leg. The bag had around 20 feet of rope attached to the parachute harness. Once a soldier jumped from his plane, he could undo the straps and the bag would fall below him. The bag would then act like a pendulum, and once it hit the ground first, it would allow for a softer landing. The British had some practice with these bags prior to D-Day. They were properly trained in how to attach and release them after making their jump. Unfortunately, the US paratroopers didn't have this luxury. The leg bags were issued to the US paras on the eve of D-Day with very little information. But not all soldiers would make their jump with a leg bag. Many wouldn't use them or be given the opportunity to. But for the ones who did, they didn't all manage to land with them. Dick Winters lost his as he went out the door of his aircraft. He wasn't alone either. Many paratroopers would lose their leg bags that night and begin their fight in France with virtually no weapons. For the British though, they had very little losses in this area. So why was this the case? There are four main reasons why US paratroopers seem to lose their leg bags more than their British counterparts. Firstly, as mentioned before, the US troops were not properly trained in their use. They were issued these bags not long before their jump on D-Day, and therefore didn't have any practice or time to become familiar with them. This is a decent factor given some soldiers overloaded their bags with too much equipment, causing them to fail when it came to H-Hour. Secondly, and along the same lines, the leg bags weren't all attached correctly. Some soldiers didn't attach the quick release straps properly, or indeed the main rope itself. Through no fault of their own due to lack of information, this was another reason for losses. The third reason actually has something to do with the parachutes themselves. The British used X-type parachutes, while the US were using T5 chutes at the time. You can see from this diagram the British X-type deploys after the lines are fully extended. This is referred to as lines first, whereas the US chutes deployed canopy first, that being the canopy would start to come out before the lines. This meant the T5 actually gave the user a greater opening shock than the British version. This is likely to have also added to the missing leg bags, coupled with the final reason, and that is the speed of the aircraft. Many of the US C-47 pilots were simply travelling too fast. Be it fear, inexperience, or just intensity of the defences around the western side of Normandy, the US pilots seemed to have a much harder time keeping their aircraft at safe jumping speeds. 
In the end, whatever the case may be, the loss of leg bags for these soldiers meant having to collect a weapon from a dead German or even a dead comrade. Not something their commanders intended, but these paratroopers were very capable of taking care of themselves in difficult situations, and they don't come more difficult than Normandy on D-Day. What did you think of the D-Day leg bag? Do you think there were ways to prevent their losses? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. As always guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to expand your knowledge and join the growing Premier History community.